Greetings everyone. I wanted to keep myself busy in the month of October, so I decided to make a drawing challenge for myself. Since this era is aesthetically focused on birds, burdens, I chose them as the main subject. So I googled random bird generator. I would link it down below. And afterwards, I listed at least 30 birds ranged in variety. Some are big, some are small, some are peculiar. Nature is diverse. We also could get to discover what type of species these birds are if I do in a free search. Spoiler alert, I did not. And I will try to characterize them as humans. I already posted this link on Twitter so feel free to join. No hard feelings if you missed the day I am not mistrunchable. <sighs> I also included an optional color palette to make the drawings more interesting. The colors are very reminiscent for Inktober. Anyway, so this is Flock 1 in turning avians into humans. Let's get it started. The first bird on the first day is the ruff. Ruffs are one of the most peculiar birds you'll ever see, especially the male ones. They are gorgeous. They have these fluff of feathers blossoming out of their head, particularly their hair and the neck part. They kind of resemble a lion's mane. If the lion is somehow found in the species of birds, it will be the ruff. Well, equivalent to them, that is. More info about the ruff is that they live on wetlands, so I have no idea why I decided to give this lad a pair of high-raise heeled boots. The most eye-catching part of the bird is of course its head so the focal point is there. I do not know also what I did in his outfit. I think this is just a case of lack of references when I did the drawing. The only reference I had is the picture of the bird. I gave him hollowed eyes. The ruff is just gorgeous. It is the signifier so I kept it in the design as well as the outrageous hair. The only thing I didn't like this Design-wise, is the feathered cape draped on his back. I love the patterns of their feathers. It seems good in concept, but I executed it poorly. They look to me more bee-like than bird-like, to be honest. Fun fact about the species is that they have their very own mating ritual. This ritual, I think it is pronounced lek. It is about this competition, a beauty contest rather, where the male shows their feathers in order to impress a female mate. Of course, the one with the most flamboyant feathers is the winner. They are just full of vanity and charisma, but a very popular lifestyle. So far, I only gave this character minimal details due to lack of of references. However, I think he turned out possibly great. With how showy and charismatic this young lad is, I picture him more flirting at the club, trying to find someone who is worthy of his time, and also pays attention with his sense of style. Day 2 is the red kite. This bird is very majestic according to its wings. The wings reminds me of traditional colors, browns, reds, yellows, golds, and all in the name of regalness. All the focus should be on the character's wings and feathers. Now I cannot show any color in this illustration because I decided to utilize my optional colors for this challenge, which are black, gray, or silver, and gold. Now I would add gold to this illustration, but I did not. I didn't know, maybe I was terrified to add in a new color. Now it is said that the red kite is a symbol of pride. A splash of gold would be necessary as well as a long dress to show the presence of royalty in this character. However, I chose not to go into that idea and so I heavily had my eyes on the wings because the patterns of the wings are pretty much the focal point of this bird and I think it worked really well together with this pose. However, you can only see the bottom part of her dress. The flowing cape make the most of the whole page. This is such a grand and elegant pose of this character. Her arms are beneath the coat so you cannot see them. The wings are part of her dress's sleeves and there is a little bit of train in the short dress. The odd thing about this drawing is her shoes. I was journaling a lot lately so I thought about my fountain pen. So the pen nib are this character's shoes. But all in well, the action and the details are shown much more 
and this drawing than day one. Maybe this character is a dancer or last minute talk for the recognition of the tail. I forgot to mention it, but the fork tail is giving fish tail but also great in nature. An entertainer of some sort. Actually, she can be also an heiress or a socialite. I believe the strongest points is the body language. Day 3 is the snow bunting. This is the first bird in this challenge who happens to be smaller in size. I would have gone with the idea of what if I made these smaller birds as children, then the bigger birds as adults or old and mature individuals. So I decided to make this bunting a child. And he is the fluffiest thing. This bird is known to inhabit in the Arctic in the more colder regions in the world so i decided that his clothes would reflect in the climate that he is currently living i already love the idea of having a triangle some sort of draped trench coat he is wearing that and i had in mind that he would be more comfortable in his own winter environment so i decided to make him sleeveless for a change although i kept these ombre type of leggings which really suits him his mask is simple yet very correlating to his circumstance. I decided to make him more timid with his body language, presenting a more youthful and shy look than the extroverted and extravagant birds in the previous days. Turns out I loved his design. I really think personality-wise this character is sweet, loving, and a little bit reserved. A4 is about the long-tailed Hit. And this bird is also tiny so I made her a child although I think much older than the snow bunting. And personality wise these kids are vastly different. She has a more energetic pose having that playful optimistic and childish nature the main point of this bird is of course the long tail i chose to incorporate a floor length sash not very practical in real life but this is fantasy. I noticed the color scheme of this bird is very fitting for the optional colors as well. I think I forgot but there is supposed to be a yellowish gold underneath the eyes of the bird. I could have touched upon that although I am still afraid of color. The focal point of this character is obviously the bottom wear, the sash, and the boots. There is also a sense of regality by me adding ribbons to this child although it is not the hindrance for doing the things that she loves. I think this character is very friendly, bubbly, and energetic towards everyone around her. She kind of is a little bit crazy and a bit talkative. She might also have a large flock of friends. In day 5, we have the Dunlin. These birds reside in the shoreline, or mudflats rather. What I would describe this little one is that they are very passive, just walking around the shore trying to find small food in the process. I may have a clear idea in my head, but I didn't know about the execution about this character. And as of before, I already did drew two children characters. I felt I need to switch it up a bit, so I made this character an adult individual and I may be stumped in the ideas of making this character because it surely isn't hitting right for me like the previous characters so we had this man in a well-tailored suit however rest in peace for the pants admiring or reflecting on this small seashell that he is holding i really like the pose it is quite the thinker however the formal wear in the wetlands and i tried to make an excuse actually what if his story includes working a job that he did not like so he goes to the beach to ponder about about this career of his. I didn't know something about being in the beach is contemplative for me. I can see a peaceful character walking along the shoreline. I did think those complexities of him are good. This is the first bird that I researched about its video footage and I must say they are cute. The way they waddle and flop. Treading in the wet areas they are so adorable. So I gave this character a sense of neutrality and having deep thoughts about life and such. I do not know if the birds themselves possess this trait, but I think this character's execution is an overall okay. The only thing I can notice is his personality through his body language, but I wish I could change his appearance, which is a similar problem to the rough. 
In day 6, we have the corn crake. Initially, I thought the species was called corn cake, and by that name alone, I was interested. And then I discovered the missing letter, so going back, the corn crake is a summer and spring bird. Corn, the crop in the name alone, is my indication that this bird should be a farmer. This bird's appearance-wise has only a few black spots. Maybe I made his colors too light, but the special thing about this bird is the sound they make. Do they want to unleash something in their throat or because it kind of reminds me of that i made this farmer boy who who has this showing amount of body hair i am torn if i should give him a hat or not at first but i think another accessory looks good on him i don't know what to come up with his personality maybe this man loves outdoors doing gardening maybe applying to have cottage core lifestyle i guess i could see that in this bird i had the choice to incorporate their distinct sound in the design of the final character and then honestly i didn't know where to put the sound anywhere in the clothing though i had the missed opportunity i think the final character is great appearance wise he seems very approachable he looks quite nice the fit and everything maybe he is a friendly and nice kind of person loves to do chores and doing help with others. Day 7 is about the carrion crow. This is where the presence of my biases will kick in. Ravens, blackbirds, and crows are one of my favorite avians, so be sure to check out that these birds will have my fullest potential. In terms of ideas and concepts to form the supposed character, the carrion crow, despite its name, is a very intelligent bird. Flashbacks to that one Mr. Bean episode with the brain structure enough to fit the high IQ. There is also a talkative side in this bird. You know, crows sometimes can be annoying with their cause and cause and cause and top of cause and more cause and cause on top of cause. That does not stop me from having a sweet spot in this bird. I gave this gentleman long hair and the very elite formal wear with also accessories all over him and also why not this fedora hat we all know the birds work for the bourgeoisie especially this season of the witch okay and theobald from maleficent as well should be recognized other than that i cannot remember any single crow represented in the media maybe i think ravenna from snow white and the huntsman although i am not sure if that would count considering that it is one of her manifestations feel free to comment below if you recognize Nice any crows or any character related to crows found in the media, television, or film. I decided to dress him up with this full length bodysuit, although I left some air in the bottom for his legs to breathe. When I initially and exhaustively brainstorm ideas about this bird as a human, I never actually followed the sketch that I first. Did. I think the pose was awkward in that one, so I made up the new pose for him on the spot, but still retaining the design that he has. I think he turned out great. I sense a little bit of intelligence in him. He gave government spy. Day 8, we have the puffin. I was immediately drawn in the design of this bird. I sense uniqueness, especially with the bird's face. I noticed in the flash the seemingly droopy eye pattern and the very vibrant and outlined beak. They are known to live by the ocean and proceed to hunt for fish for their diet. I briefly researched about this bird on YouTube and I find this mini documentary. I'll put the link down below. What is mentioned of the video is a particular flock of puffins, which is essentially a cute puffin family. I love that the children are called pufflings. With the visual glory of this bird, I already had a character in mind on what to draw. She turned out to be a very nurturing mother figure. I think this bird is very wholesome. In the means of designing this character, I tried to be more out of the box if you know what I mean. I gave this puffin character a hood and a shawl. I am not sure about the dress if I wanted to be floor length or shorter but i had the choice to go with the floor length and she looks very motherly now the only funny thing or weird about this design is the fish strapped on her belt a very unrealistic way for storage in the end she kind of looks like more of a penguin but i think i can see some similarities between the puffin and the penguin as well i think this is one of the most unique characters so far 
in day 9 second to the last of this first week is the little egret egrets remind me of herons the little egret is more the smaller version of the great egret perhaps varying articles again when i researched about this bird some say they like to eat alone some say they like to eat with the flock other texts state that they are sociable while others say they can get a bit territorial the only inspiration i had in this bird is little so we have another child character maybe she is a preteen i think she is taller than the snow bunting and the long-tailed tit the feathers of this bird are fluffy like in eyesight i am a sucker for very poofy garments so the poofier the dress the better although i still maintain the shape so it is like a funnel type of composition the very eye-catching part of this character's design is the mask the hair is a close second but the mask is the star previously i find the execution of the masks that i drew are kind of flat it does only shape the human similar to the bird's heads but that is all that it's going to get it turned out that this character is an heiress of some sort i think she is a rich girl or some sort of nepotism baby not clearly but the child of someone who is wealthy i love the princess vibes although i am not sure if she is spoiled or not in the last day of this batch, we have the house martin in day 10. What I found interesting about this bird is their living space. They create this some sort of haven filled with mud or dirt, similar to bee or wasp's residence. They reside inside these mud things. I think I saw a similar species, if I remembered correctly, in my previous school. Aside from their special home renovations, I watched the video. I love the way the curvature of their flight. They do this curved movement or pathing when they got into their homes. It is very extra to look at. With enough brainstorming about this bird, I would pick a domestic type of character. I'm not sure if he fits in in a domestic setting. He gives off this very sophisticated and vintage look. Maybe he is some sort of old-timey butler who would love to do an infinite amount of chores. I definitely did some cuts in his outfit to make it more unique in a way. I definitely could have add more detail. The ribbons are very much a last-minute staple. But overall, I think this design is also okay. Simple, nothing too much, but I think it's accurate to the portrayal of this bird. So there you have it, a very generous amount of birds as humans in the first batch. So far in all of the characters, I definitely like the most. She's very expressive in execution, just the right amount of detail. Everything from her mask and her cape is extravagant. Please let me know what you think of these characters in the comments below or also tell me what is your favorite. That is all for this week's batch and stay tuned for the second batch of this challenge. I am so excited. I will see you in the next video and have a nice day.